Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I love going to dance parties. I went to a handful of dance parties over the past few years, and I did so much dancing at every single one. I also used to throw some dance parties at my house myself, especially for my birthday back in high school. It's been quite a while since I last threw a dance party at my house though, and I don't even know why. Jellyfish Jam is the episode where Spongebob brings home a jellyfish and throws a wild dance party at his house, which ends up getting out of hand. Like Hall Monitor, this episode aired on August 28th, 1999 and is, in my opinion, the first episode to really show off how amazing the music of the show can be. It may not seem like much on the surface, but music is really important when it comes to a program. Don't get me wrong, we've heard some great music up to this point in the series, like the Ripped Pants song from episode 5, Ripped Pants, and the music heard during the title cards in general, but this episode really emphasizes the music the show can bring to the table. Because of the super long musical montage of the song that plays during all of the scenes of Spongebob and the Jellyfish dancing. That song is called Stadium Rave and is something that every human being on the planet knows about Spongebob. It was also featured on the Spongebob's Greatest Hits CD from 2009, so that means that the song must be good, right? Yep. Before I get into the episode itself, there are a couple quick fun facts about this episode, especially from behind the scenes. According to a behind the scenes documentary on the season 1 DVD called The First Season Crew On, this episode was pitched on September 28, 1998, and some storyboard panels are shown on the wall in the background. This is also the first time when CGI is used in the series. Specifically, where Spongebob's house jumps around and the camera pans to Squidward's house. And that's about it. With all that out of the way, let's watch this episode and see Spongebob's epic dance party with the jellyfish. So the episode starts up and the French narrator is talking about Spongebob jellyfishing in jellyfish fields and he's disguised as a piece of coral. Spongebob slides over and catches a jellyfish. Spongebob then milks the jellyfish for some jelly on his toast. Okay, how does he not get stung since he's touching the stingers? He eats the toast, imitates the French narrator, and walks home. The jellyfish returns Spongebob's glasses to him, but wants to go home with Spongebob. Spongebob tells the jellyfish he can't come home with him, and he has to stay at Jellyfish Field, but the jellyfish still wants to come home with Spongebob, damn it! No matter what Spongebob tried, the jellyfish was still persistent on coming home with Spongebob. After Spongebob scolded the jellyfish, the jellyfish looked sad, and Spongebob changed his mind. Wow, what a pushover. Spongebob shows Squidward his new jellyfish pet, and Spongebob shows how the jellyfish is trained, despite the fact that Squidward says that the jellyfish is a wild animal. Spongebob takes the jellyfish to his house, and they start dancing together to the loud techno song called Stadium Rave, with green, blue, purple, and orange lights flashing. Whew, people told me I can dance too, but damn! The music plays all day for 12 hours straight, into the night, and pisses off Squidward to no end. Spongebob and the jellyfish continue dancing, but Spongebob soon starts to get tired and turns off the stereo to go to bed. The jellyfish wants to continue dancing, but Spongebob puts him on a leash and takes him to bed. Gary warns Spongebob about keeping the jellyfish, but Spongebob doesn't listen and goes to bed anyway. While he's sleeping, more jellyfish come to Spongebob's house, and the first jellyfish opens the window for them. Gary notices this, but they just squirt jelly at him. Then, every jellyfish comes into Spongebob's house. When Spongebob wakes up the next morning, he was looking for the jellyfish, but not Gary. Why are you not looking for Gary, Spongebob? Gary isn't in the room either, and you're only looking for the jellyfish. Spongebob slips on jelly and falls down the stairs and finds every single jellyfish from Jellyfish Fields in his house. They use Spongebob as a disco ball, which leads Spongebob to try to turn the stereo off and get the jellyfish to leave. But the jellyfish prevent him and just make him dance with them. Meanwhile, Squidward was furious that the music has been blaring for 18 hours straight and calls Spongebob to yell at him. Huh, I just realized. How was Spongebob able to sleep through the loud music, but Squidward wasn't? A jellyfish picks up the phone, and when Squidward yells through the phone, the jellyfish squirts Squidward through the phone. Squidward tries to retaliate by playing his clarinet loudly, but this angers the jellyfish, and they sting Spongebob. Spongebob asks Squidward if he could play his clarinet better, which offends Squidward. I agree. There are so many better ways for Spongebob to talk to Squidward about his clarinet. Squidward plays his clarinet much louder through stereos, and the jellyfish breaks Spongebob's stuff. The jellyfish go to Squidward's house and sting him, and Squidward comes over and gives Spongebob his clarinet, saying he won't be playing anymore. The jellyfish break the clarinet and it catches fire, and Spongebob finally snaps and tries to get rid of the stereo, but it ends up getting broken. 
The jellyfish get mad and they sting SpongeBob more, so he and Gary escape to the roof. The jellyfish all leave SpongeBob's house and swarm angrily around them. Well, at least the jellyfish are all outside of SpongeBob's house now. Gary starts clicking his eyes together, making a musical sound that calms the jellyfish down. When SpongeBob realizes this, he leaves the house with Gary and the jellyfish follow them. More sounds join in Gary's clicking, like popping bubbles, a gurgling treasure chest, a rattling chain, dolphins chattering, singing scallops, jellyfish making guitar sounds, and instruments like bass and trumpets. When they finally get all the jellyfish back to Jellyfish Fields, SpongeBob runs home with the narrator saying that SpongeBob has learned how wild animals throw very wild parties. Then Squidward is shown taking a bath to heal his jellyfish stings, and the episode ends. So is the moral of the story that wild animals throw wild parties, or to not let a wild animal in your house at all? Because a wild party at my house is A-OK -okay in my book, but I could do without the wild animals in my house. So that was Jellyfish Jam, and oh boy do I have an opinion on it. I think that this episode is pretty good. There are a lot of great scenes in this one. I love the parts when the jellyfish is trying to follow Spongebob home, as well as the part at the beginning when Spongebob was camouflaged as Coral right before he caught the jellyfish. Pretty much every scene with Squidward in this episode was awesome. The animation in this episode is great. It really shines in this episode and you really see it during parts like every single dance scene and near the end when Spongebob leads the jellyfish back to jellyfish fields. Near the beginning, I mentioned that the part where Spongebob's house was raving was done with CG animation. I remember as a kid, I thought that part looked different compared to the rest of the animation, but it never affected how much I liked the episode. The music is absolutely amazing. Stadia Rave is an awesome piece of music and undeniably one of the most iconic tracks in the entire Spongebob series. As I mentioned, it's on the Spongebob's Greatest Hits CD and I love listening to this song on my playlist whenever I go to the gym and attempt to work out. I also feel like the track at the end is really underrated. I always loved when more instruments and other random objects and the scallops and dolphins were gradually added to the song. I will say, the first time I saw this episode as a kid, when I saw the dolphin, I thought Spongebob was marching straight towards the dolphins for whatever reason. And at the end, I was a bit confused about it when Spongebob ran home without encountering the dolphins. Eventually, I learned that the dolphins were part of the rhythm. But like I said, I was young and dumb. Weird thoughts entered my brain all the time. Still didn't change the fact that this song is great though. I don't see nearly as many people talking about this one compared to Stadium Rave. Maybe it's because there aren't any flashing colors on screen like with the Stadium Rave music. If there's anything negative to say about this, it would be that the pacing is rather on the slow side. While the dancing scenes are great and the music is amazing, that's the majority of what happens in this episode. Scenes like the jellyfish following Spongebob home, almost all the dancing sequences, and the part with Spongebob realizing that Gary's eyes clicking together calmed down the jellyfish, were kind of slow if I'm being honest. Sure, there are a lot of awesome dance moves and great sequences with the jellyfish, but aside from that, nothing really happens. I wouldn't say the episode is boring though, the music is awesome and every montage that occurs whenever it's just a musical interlude is just so fun to watch. And there are quite a few of them throughout the episodes. So I'd say if there's anybody out there who's not a huge fan of musical montages because they can last a little too long at times, then this episode may not be for them. For others, they'll definitely have a good time with this episode. The music is so good you won't even realize how much time is actually going by. I remember when I first downloaded Stadium Rave from iTunes and listened to it, I was surprised that it was only one minute long. However, that's because that version just starts at the beginning of the song and it ends right before Squidward complains about Spongebob playing the music for 12 hours. There was also the part after Squidward yells and before Spongebob turns off the stereo. This part was not included as part of the track and I never understood why. Similar to how the wet I rip my pans line of the ripped pants song was cut from the greatest hits release as well as the part from the goofy goober rock song where spongebob was scatting and wearing white clothes that was cut from the album too i don't understand it and i never did in conclusion i think that this episode is good the music used here is astounding the animation is awesome and there are a lot of funny moments 
It may drag on for some people, but the music is so awesome that it was never a problem to me, so if you can look past it, then it's an awesome time. Jellyfish Jam is a great episode. There might be a few slow parts here or there, but that's pretty minor in the grand scheme of things. The super catchy music, awesome animation, and really funny moments make up for it in my opinion. And it's a great time. Also, rewatching this episode made me miss those parties I threw back in high school, so I decided I'm throwing a party for my birthday this year, and I contacted all my friends. Oh, what do you know? My birthday's been cancelled this year. Not again.